Hello, hello. My name is Kim Addis. I am the president and founder of Frame of Mind Coaching and the co-founder of The Journal That Talks Back. You have just joined the Frame of Mind Coaching podcast, and today is Fridays with Fernie, where my daughter Fernie comes onto the podcast and gives me these random cases to work on. I have no idea what she's going to give me every time we talk. Fernie, welcome. Hello. Thank you for having me. How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. It's Friday. So it's uh, an awesome day. Looking forward to the weekend. It's been an amazing month so far. Looking to what comes next. How are you? Pretty good. Settling back into life. Things are slowly starting to come back to life, but uh, not fast enough, I feel. (laughs) Not fast enough. All right. So what do you have for me today? All right. So today we have a case about a woman named Jan and Jan started her first small business. She's really passionate about it. She makes candles and other home goods. Um, And she's working really, really hard, like really very, very hard on this project. She's super passionate about it day and night. She's making candles and working on her social media and, you know, trying to reach out to people, trying as many things as possible despite, you know, everything, doing everything her mentors say and really putting in all that effort, she feels like she's not moving fast enough. She feels like, yeah, she gets some followers every day. She gets a sale maybe once every two weeks, but it's not enough for her. And she doesn't know what to do to make it move faster. She's feeling, starting to feel a bit discouraged and like maybe this wasn't the best idea. And I guess the question is, what, what advice would you have, have for Jan in terms of her business and in terms of kind of her view on this whole m- location in life, if that makes okay. sense? Can I ask you a few questions? How long has she been doing this for? She's pretty new. So she's a year in. Okay. And in a year, has she made any sales? Yes. Okay. And where have those sales come from? Some of them, her friends who have supported her um, yep. and some, some people she found on the internet, some social media people, um, okay. and then some people from ads and stuff like that. Okay. And um, does she love making candles? Is this like her passion, her life, her, her future? This is what she wants to do. She has that creative side to her. So she wants to spend every moment making candles. Well, I don't know that it's necessarily exclusive to candles, but she really does making art, does love making art um, and catering things towards the, the people. Okay. The issue, it sounds like she doesn't know who her people are. Why do you say that? Well, because when you say the people, I say, who, do you, who did she sell to? You kind of give me a hodgepodge. It's not clear who her client is. Right. Well, I'm I'll sure give she- you an example. When I look at who are my clients, frame of mind coaching clients, they're highly driven individuals who tend to either have a senior executive leadership position in a corporation, or they are business owners and their senior leadership team. Those are frame of mind clients. We know who they are. We know how to find them. And we're really, really narrowly focused on our market. Um, does Jen know who her market is? I think she's trying to figure it out, but she has a pretty good idea. I think with candles, it's also a bit more general. No, no, there's nothing general. And that's the, that's the issue. When we think that our market is general, our messaging becomes very wishy-washy. It becomes unclear and we, we're not honing in. We're not able to find the person who's in love with candles and has a million candles and just wants that one more, right? We don't know who those people are. And so the first thing that I would tell Jan is look back at the people who have purchased your product and try to understand who they are and what made them buy. If they were friends who just wanted to support you, put them aside for a moment. But if they are people who purchased your product or her product and um, they have a certain you know, location, they have a certain age, they have a certain interest, they belong to certain groups, they do certain things. We want to really hone in on who is the market that we're targeting. So that's thing number one. Thing number two is, if Jan is determined to make this business a a success, I would say to her, you know what? It's business. We have ups and downs. We have a roller coaster ride that we're doing. But one of the things I would do is seek out, she said she has mentors, but seek out other business owners who are doing something similar. 
not exactly the same, but something similar and connect with them and ask for help, ask for advice. It could be, you know, people who sell other products that are just like that. And she could connect with them on LinkedIn and say, hey, you know, I'm new to the industry. I'm young. I'm trying to figure things out. I'm banging my head against the wall here and there. I'd love to get some advice. And so you might find someone who takes an interest or she might find someone who takes an interest in what she's doing and says, you know what, let me introduce you to this person or that person. But at the end of the day, when you're running a business, it's like an uh, you cannot stop. You have to try and knock and bang on every door. And every time a door opens, it leads you to a hallway that leads you to the next door. And you have to be okay to go through dark hallways to get to the next door. You just have to be. But for me, from my perspective, as I'm hearing you, it sounds like Jan really needs to identify her, her market, identify her buyer. She has to hang out where her buyers hang out. And that might be physically or online. She needs to kind of, you know, find out where people who are interested in candles exist. Are they on Pinterest? Do they create uh, art of their own? Can you collaborate with some of these people or can she collaborate with these people, et cetera? And so you want to find out who your target is and where they are. And the next part is to kind of, it sounds like the mentors aren't necessarily experts in her field. And so what we want to do is find mentors who are more of, have more experience specifically in what she's trying to accomplish. We want to connect with those people. And use our youthful energy to say, can you, can you provide some insight, some help, you know, trying to figure this out, don't know which way to turn. There are lots and lots of people out there who are very eager to help a young person open a door. The, the third thing that I would suggest is there are all kinds of interesting grants out there that are available to a young person to help them with their business, to help them with their uh, marketing, uh, particularly if she's a female business owner, that she should investigate and look into. And so that's another option as well. And so what would you do about her feelings of discouragement? The fact that she's, you know, not as excited about it because things aren't really happening. Is that something you would give her practical solutions to, or is it more of a mindset thing? Well, part of it is a mindset thing. Part of it is a practical solutions thing, right? Because when you keep trying and you're not getting any results, one of the questions I always want to say is, where did you get results and how did those results come? And what I find a lot of times business owners, especially entrepreneurs, they acquire success and then they forget about the success they acquired. And then they go and they try a new strategy instead of really blowing up the strategy that worked. And so I would pursue that and ask, you know, where did your success come? If you had some people who bought, who are these people? Let's look at how that happened. Let's see if there's anything we could do to multiply those, those, uh, those efforts. And so that's number one. I would definitely look at her strategy and the things she's doing. But also I would talk to her about what it's like to be an entrepreneur from a, as a coach myself. But I, I think of myself as more of an entrepreneur first, then a coach. And as an entrepreneur, sometimes you bang your head against the wall. Sometimes you make poor decisions. Sometimes you work super hard and you make no progress. But I will say that over the years, when you make, when you put in effort consistently over time, results come. And it, sometimes it's about looking at what you've done, the effort you're putting in, and the results that are uh, happening as a result of the effort and tweaking and tweaking and tweaking. So it's effort analysis, tweak, effort analysis, tweak. That's what you have to do when you're running a business and you have to adjust what you're doing sometimes, but you have to be in it for the long run. You have to have mental stamina. You have to have physical stamina. And for me, one of the questions I asked is, is this what she wants to do with her life? Because for me, when I look at my business, there's nothing else I ever want to do with my life. I never want to work for anybody else. I never want to, this is what I want to do. There are no other options for me. This is my passion. And so if that's not the case for her, that's a whole other conversation. And I would say, well, what is your passion? Let's discuss that. Maybe this isn't necessarily the best fit for you. So lots of things to discuss and investigate. There's her mindset. 
there's whether or not this is aligned with her skill set and her dreams and desires. Uh, but there's also strategy for sure, because it seems like she's kind of just trying random things, but not really honing in on a strategy that makes sense. That makes sense to me. So if you were to give her one last piece of advice, what would it be? Uh, I would start off with who's my market and am I talking to those people and am I, am I finding them? So I would look at the strategy first and then we would talk about mindset. And then we would actually, what I'd start with is, is this what you really want to be doing? And then if she says yes, then we talk about strategy and then we kind of fortify her resilience to ride out the bumps along the way. Yeah. A lot of bumps, a lot of bumps, but for those of you who are listening, you're maybe starting a business, maybe you're uh, going through your own bumps along the way, lots and lots of questions to ask yourself. A lot of times people ask themselves, what should I be doing differently? And that's an important question because strategy is, is important. But uh, the first thing you want to ask yourself is, how do I think about this differently? What am I thinking that isn't necessarily working? Or what do I believe to be true that isn't really lined up with the goal? And so in the case of Jan, you know, her belief is this isn't working and perhaps it is because she's had some success in the past. She's just not paying attention to that. So we need to follow the trail of success and see how we can blow up the things that have worked in the past. Makes sense to me. If only if, it, if only it were that easy. <laughs> if only it, yeah, it's not easy. You got to have, you, you got to have a stomach for running your own business. Definitely. Um, for those of you who are listening, I hope you took something away from this particular episode. If you have a challenge that you want to hear about on the podcast, please reach out to us. We'd love to get your cases. Fernie's always looking for new material to work with. So Fernie, how do we reach out to you? Please email me. So my email is Fernie Cotliar. That's F-E-R-N-E-K-O-T-L-Y-R at live.com. And please honestly do email me because I, I will use your cases. And uh, if you want to reach out to me as well, please do. It's Kim at frameofmindcoaching.com uh, as well. Please check out our website. We renovated the Frame of Mind Coaching website. Please take a look. It's cool. It's got some new colors, a new look and feel. We'd love to hear what you think. And in addition to that, if you know a young person who's looking for coaching, uh, please send them to the journal that talks back.com. In the meantime, we'll see you next week. Have a great week. Bye. Bye. Bye.